worker was seen stumbling, talking incoherently, and eventually vomiting before becoming unresponsive. Though paramedics transported the worker to the hospital, the worker died only two hours after being Let's get to Boss Watch, folks. Every single week, bosses are breaking the law, and we got to we gotta let you know about it. First off, like I mentioned earlier, this child, this boy, who was killed by the negligence of his employer in Alabama. This is from AL.com. <coughs> the U.S. Department of Labor has fined a company $117,000 in connection with the 2019 death of a 15-year-old who plunged 50 feet from a work site on his first day on the job. According to the DOL, Apex Roofing and Restoration paid the penalties after investigators determined that Apex Roofing and Restoration of Pelham violated child labor laws in employing the teen. The incident happened on July 1st, 2019, as the teen was working on the roof of a Coleman Casting Corporation building. According to the investigators, the worker fell, suffering fractures of the wrist, skull, and ribs, among other severe in injuries, and the teen was pronounced dead on the, uh, at the scene of the incident. According to the DOL, the teen was employed in violation of a law that prohibits workers under the age of 18 from engaging, engaging in dangerous jobs, including roofing or construction operations. Uh, Apex Roofing, through a spokesperson, said it was, quote, truly heartbroken by the death. The tragic uh, incident occurred when a subcontractor's worker brought his sibling to a work site without Apex's knowledge or permission. The spokesperson said, Apex has a long-standing policy uh, prohibiting any form of child labor. In addition, since the incident, Apex has implemented a number of safety measures to further strengthen job site security and safety. Our hearts are with this family and any family who suffers a loss. Federal investigators have issued several fines in recent years for child labor violations in Alabama, particularly in the auto industry, which Kay Ivey and the Council of Bosses want to make you believe is fantastic and great and everything is good in the auto industry. Both SL Alabama and JKUSA, an Opelika temporary employment agency, paid fines in 2023 from federal court and the Alabama Department of Labor after investigators found workers as young as 13 employed in one factory. Last year, the Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division found child labor violations in more than 950 investigations, res resulting in more than $8 million in fines. Another Alabama killer. During the peak of summer in 2023, a 33-year-old concrete finisher collapsed at a Huntsville construction site after showing clear signs of heat illness, a tragedy that federal safety investigators found could have prevented uh, had the employer <coughs> followed established safety practices for heat hazards. An investigation by the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration into the July 28, 2023 fatality found workers of SJNL General Contractor LLC were handing were hand forming concrete curbs when, as the heat index neared 107 and the humidity climbed to 85 percent, the worker was seen by coworkers stumbling, talking incoherently, and eventually <coughs> vomiting before becoming unresponsive. Though employees provided first aid and paramedics transported the worker to the hospital, the worker died only two hours after being admitted. OSHA investigators determined that SJNL General Contractor LLC exposed this worker and 18 other employees to hazards of extreme heat while working outside in direct sun during their 10-hour shifts. OSHA determined that SJNL General Contractor LLC exposed workers to hazards associated with high heat while working in direct sunlight, and so the employer faces a whopping $16,000 in proposed penalties. Increasing summer temperatures continue to impact workers. Fatalities due to exposure to extreme temperatures increased by almost 20% in 2022, rising to 51 from 43 deaths in 2021. Fatalities specifically due to environmental heat were 43 in 2022, up from 36 in 2021. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tblr.fm slash donate. 
in Florida, a U.S. Department of Labor safety investigation, uh, U.S. Department of Labor safety investigators have found that a Melbourne rental crane service provider could have prevented the electrocution of a 34-year-old crane operator at a Palm Bay work site in August 2023 by ensuring required safety measures were in place and followed. Investigators with the department's Occupational Safety and Health Administration instead found that on August 23, 2023, Captain Hook's Crane Service Incorporated sent an uncertified crane operator to a residential construction project alone to lift and place metal frame roof trusses at a residential construction project. After positioning the crane on an unpaved driveway and extending the boom to complete the first lift, the operator was electrocuted when the steel wire rope and chain rigging suspended from the crane boom contacted two 13,000 volt power lines next to the residential property. OSHA cited Captain Hook's crane service for three serious violations for using an uncertified crane operator and operating a hydraulic crane within 20 feet of overhead power lines. The employer also failed to ensure the crane was positioned on a stable foundation by utilizing adequate cribbing materials meant to support the outriggers of the crane at a greater height. The agency also cited the employer for two other than serious violations for not labeling and marking rigging equipment and failing to ensure warning labels on the hydraulic crane were eligible. The agency proposed a whopping $26,000 in penalties. Several dishonorable mentions this week. The U.S. Department of Labor has recovered $184,000 in back wages and liquidated damages for 56 seasonal guest workers and U.S. workers of Sales Restaurant in Tampa, Florida, after finding multiple violations of federal non-immigrant work program regulations and the federal minimum wage and overtime regulations. The U.S. Department of Labor has recovered $200,000 for a former Cobb and Douglas public health worker in Atlanta, Georgia, after the county agency violated the workers' rights to protected leave under the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act. The U.S. Department of Labor has recovered over $500,000 in back wages and liquidated damages for 139 employees of Ian Construction, a federal construction contractor in Guam who shortchanged workers in violation of federal law, labor laws again. The DOL found that they violated the law in 2012, 2016, and 2021. U.S. Department of Labor Wage and Hour Division investigators found that Boatwright Farms paid 106 U.S. workers in Steele, Alabama, less than similar H-2A immigrant workers in violation of the law, stating that immigrant workers cannot be given preferential treatment over U.S. workers. The division recovered $8,862 in back wages for the 106 U.S. workers and assessed $9,970 in civil money penalties to the employer. Walmart agreed to pay $30,000 and provide other relief to settle charges of sexual harassment in an EOC lawsuit, specifically that a Defuniac Springs, Florida worker was harassed verbally and physically, reported the harassment, and Walmart failed to take, hack to take action. Affordable Home Furnishings in Baton Rouge, Louisiana has agreed to pay a former employee $105,000 to settle a race discrimination lawsuit alleging that a white manager repeatedly used the N-word and then fired a black worker who reported the slurs. Lots of stuff all the time. All the time employers are getting away with this. And, you know, with the, with the child labor stuff, the... Um, you know, the thing that Republicans think is wrong with that is that it's illegal. It's absolutely, uh, absolutely wild. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.